Welcome to the Behind the Scenes at the English Project. I'm Danny Kiernan. I am the writer, director, and editor of this short film. In this Behind the Scenes video, I'm going to show you how I made the film all the way from pre-production to post-production. Okay? Let's go! Going to this project, I knew I had to do something that was just big, bold, and completely out there. You know, like all or nothing. And I thought, nobody's doing a silent film, so I thought that'd be a fun thing to do. He thought it was really funny how I was making a silent film for a microphone contest. But regardless if I decided to enter this into the contest, I thought this would be my next film because I really liked the idea and was the first full thought out idea I had in a long time. So I began writing the film. I wrote it in Adobe Story, which I get. I wrote it in Adobe Story, and I wrote it in I think one or two settings. What you saw on the screen is pretty much the first draft of the film. I changed some grammatical errors, but other than that, it was the same exact thing. Uh, casting? Well, I knew there was one person I had in mind, Russell, who played Luke in the film. I saw some other short films he made in accident, and he just gave that nice, big energy, you know, very exaggerated body movements that I, th that I knew would just be perfect for this. Now, the villain, who was played by a friend of mine, David, I saw some films that he made, and one of them was just was just a conversation between two people, and it was like an, it was an argument, and it just it could really show it showed how his dark side was a little bit. I guess that's the best way to explain it. Now, when I was filming, there really wasn't too many problems. Um, there wasn't a precise deadline when any of the cast members had to leave, so I was able to not have to rush myself. I could look at the script with me, and take my time, make sure I saw the shots up, two good takes at minimum, and I think it worked out fairly well. The scene by the train was by far the most difficult part. We were, I wasn't exactly sure when the next train was going to come, so I always had to make sure my actors were in position, that way when the train came we were ready to film. I used um, a little bit of gear for the film. I didn't need a microphone for the actual, when I was on set filming, that was later in the process. but. When I was on set, I used my Canon T3, not the T3i, but the T3, which I'm using to film right now. I filmed in monochrome, so I didn't have to desaturate anything. I'd be able to see the look right in camera. I did use a reflector for a few shots. I didn't really carry it around too much, but it was a 40-inch 5-in-1 reflector, and I used it for some shots that were in the shade so I can light up the other actor's face. Now you can see on my camera right now I have the very expensive, brand new, like just on the market, Sunshade Pro from Lettuce. It's an amazing thing because it was very sunny that day and uh, instead of having to cut my hand over trying to be able to see what I'm filming, this just made it very possible. Now you could just use um, cardboard and masking tape and that'll work just fine, but I had this already very expensive quality made thing. The project my character was printing and using the film, that was actually the script. I was kind of in a rush that morning trying to get all my gear together, didn't have a chance to print an old project of mine, so I just used that. It was also actually a really nice, easy way to get your actors to hold stuff for you. So after I filmed the production part, I began to edit the film. I edited the entire film in Adobe Story CC and also did the effect shots, which there weren't really many, in After Effects. The title card I created in After Effects and I just went on Google, typed in sound film title card. I used different examples on Google so I can create my own things that they want because I want to be original. I used temporary music, which was by Kevin McCloyd at Incapitech. It was so easy because I didn't record with my music teacher yet the final soundtrack, and it was just something so I can really see what the film was like, and also show him so he can, he can see the feel I was going for. Ooh, it's cold. It's winter, and I'm gonna show it like this. A few days later, we went to the auditorium, and I had the film on an iPad so you can see the film, hear the music what I was going for, and also play along to it in real time seeing how I wanted it to go. I recorded the piano with my Rode NTG2. This is the first shoot I've ever used it on. And I really recently just picked it up and it performed beyond what I could imagine. Now there were a few VFX shots where the paper was falling by Sylvester's feet. Um, I couldn't, the wind was kept switching directions and I couldn't get it to fall just the way I wanted to. So I came into the frame, made sure I had a clean plate, came into the frame, 
dropped it, and then just cut myself out in After Effects. And in the end, it doesn't even look like I'm there. Now, there was one mis really major mistake. And that was when we were by the train station, and I was filming Sylvester walk away. The actor who played Luke was in the background, but not in the spot he was supposed to be. So I had to go into After Effects, and I painted him out using the clone stamp tool. I then just masked out the actor who played Sylvester, his arm and his head in front of it, so it looks like he's actually going in front of it. Hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes look at how I made this film. I had a blast making it. If you didn't see the actual film yet, you can click right here to go to the YouTube page or in the description to go to the page on Rhodes' website where you could vote for the film if you decide to. One last time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.